Welcome to the Mary Mack Show, where we will be talking about your feelings, experiences, and pain following the death of a loved one. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Wherever you find yourself in this entire world, I welcome you. How are you doing, my friend, my warrior? I hope this day finds you well and safe. Often, we don't understand what's going on after a loved one's death. It just doesn't seem fair. It just doesn't make any sense. He or she was your everything. How could they die? And why did they die now? They had so much to live for, especially if they were so young or so young at heart. You may be discouraged that your prayers went unanswered. You believed your loved one would recover from that operation and that it would be successful. You believed that they would recover from their illness. You believed that they would be safe while at their job, especially police and firefighters, doctors and nurses. We could never have imagined the outcomes, and now we are numb. We ask ourselves the same question, why? and we become angry because the answer we are looking for never comes. So we badger ourselves and make ourselves even more weak and depressed, because the answer is elusive, and we think God is punishing us, and that's the farthest thing from the truth. Everyone's life has a plan. Have you ever thought that your life would be completely different now if you had gone down another road in the past? Maybe, yes. But you'd never have met your husband and had your child. But you say, my child died too soon. My spouse died too soon. My parent, my sister or brother all died too soon. Yes. But can you trust that your child, spouse, parent, or sibling was with you exactly how long they were meant to be here? Pretty heavy stuff, huh? So let's just think about that for a moment. No matter how much we want things to go back to the way they were, they just won't. Nothing we do can change that. And I know it's very painful to hear me say that, but I really want you to consider this. No matter how long we wish it never happened, no matter how sad we are, no matter how long we choose to live in our cocoons, it won't change how they died, or when they died, or how old they were when they died. I know you probably want to throw something at me right now, (laughs) but I want you to get well. I want you to reframe how you look at your life now. I want you to trust yourself that you have the right 
to move forward. And yes, you have every right to sink into your grief when you need to. But what I wish and encourage you to do is remember that you still have your life to live. When they died, no one declared that you were dead too. Let that sink in, please. Now you may have days when you may feel you are emotionally dead. You may have wondered how you're even making it through all your responsibilities and obligations each day. And if your grief is new, you may be saying, I haven't gotten anywhere near a place where I can feel anything but pain. So if that's you, just remember this message because one day it will be time to trust yourself that you have a right to a new life. It's important to give yourself permission to grieve, but it's also important to give yourself permission to live again. To create a life after your bereavement has softened. Yes, every so often, it will creep back up for shorter periods of time. Like when you hear a children's song from the same TV program that you used to watch with your child. Or your wedding song. Or an advertisement on TV for the cruise you took together. All these triggers are natural and normal. You need to trust that we are exactly where we should be along our journey. Don't compare yourself to others. Just be you. You can't be anyone but who you are. Because actually, everyone else is already taken. Don't you love that line? You are grieving in your timing, and they are grieving in their timing, and you should never think that you are not far enough along when you see the way that others are dealing with their life and their grief. As I've said in the past, everyone has their own timing. Please don't forget this. We need to trust ourselves to know that just the right people will come into our lives to help us. To trust ourselves, to know that things will become better a little bit more each day. We need to trust ourselves that our grieving process is the one that is right for us, not someone else. How our relatives grieve the death of a loved one has nothing to do with our path. Sometimes we feel like we have to take the same path as they do and the same timing as they do, but that's nonsense. You need to trust that you are exactly where you should be. Not everyone is going to understand how we are grieving and in the time frame we are grieving, and we have to learn and trust ourselves enough to let their feelings and opinions fall away and not let them affect us. If we keep trying to please other people in the way that we are grieving, we are going to be completely frozen. We won't know which way is up, and while we want to please other people, when it comes to our grieving process, it is definitely yours alone. Even you and your spouse will deal with the death of a child in a different way, and you need to trust that that's the path they need to take. And they need to trust that your process is the one that you should be on. And it will take a great deal of conversation and loving kindness to help one another to move forward. And there will be many people in your world who will eventually start to comment and offer their opinion as to why you aren't further along on your journey. They will say things like, Aren't you over this by now? Or, That happened over two years ago, didn't it? As if to remind you of something you already know all too well. 
Yes, it's been two years. And yes, my son is dead. Yes, my wife is dead. Like I didn't know that? There will always be insensitive people who supposedly mean well, but they don't. They put their noses into our lives with ignorant comments, and all we want to do is smack them. And the sad part is, it usually comes from our own family and friends. They think they are doing good, but it only causes more pain. So what I want you to know is this, that you need to trust that more sensitive people will arrive into your life. They will become your little angels, and they come out of nowhere. Maybe at a bereavement support group, and you become close friends to help one another because you both experience the stillbirth of a baby. Maybe at a suicide support group because you both lost a brother or sister and you're devastated that they did this, leaving your entire family and your life in shambles. Maybe at a homicide support group for survivors and you learn the criminal justice system together and on those lonely nights when no one else understands you, you reach out to that other brother or sister or mother or father, who knows exactly what you're going through. When Angela was murdered, I went to the Mid-Manhattan Library to find some help. I just had no idea where you'd go to get help for something like this. I didn't know whom to reach out to, but I certainly knew where to reach out to reference books to begin my journey. I didn't even know the word bereavement was a thing. I remember asking the reference librarian where I could find help after someone was murdered. She led me to the stacks, and it was there, with all the books pulled down on the floor around me, that I found a group called Parents of Murdered Children. It was in the back of a book called The Bereaved Parent and I'm forever grateful to that author all those years ago. The next day, I reached out to the group's leaders, Barbara and Sid, whose son had been murdered, and a few weeks later, we found ourselves in their living room with seven other couples who were dealing with the same thing. We were numb back then. Our family didn't have a clue how to help us and often their well-meaning advice fell flat. They had no idea the complexities of having a person murdered in your family. The homicide detectives, the medical examiner, the funeral, the long-sleeve clothing she would need to wear because of all her bruises, the money to bury her, a new cemetery vault, the fact that they still hadn't arrested anyone days later. We didn't share this with most of our family and friends. We knew it would be too overwhelming for them, and it would have been even more hurtful for us when their reactions would be less than what we wanted to comfort us. So we stayed to ourselves. I trusted that we would find just the right people to comfort us. I prayed and trusted that we would learn what we needed to learn, from just the right people. And in those books, we did. You might not realize it yet, but what you need is on the way. Hold that thought in your mind and heart. Say out loud to the universe and God, what would happen if just the right people would arrive in my life to help me during this grieving process? What would happen if just the right people would come into my life and guide me through the next phase of my pain? What would happen if I learned of just the right support groups and contact people who would truly understand what I'm going through, especially when my family and friends do not, trusting that I would be completely understood? 
Trust God that He already has your life's plan set up. And even if you're really angry with Him, He's the source of your great comfort, so please try not to bash Him. Give prayer a chance. And by the way, prayer is simply speaking to Him. Tell Him everything that needs to be said, even your anger. Trust when things aren't working out that the right people will appear. That the next perfect job will come to you. That your next perfect home will come to you. If you keep thinking that all is lost, you will remain stuck, and I don't want that for you. Amid all this pain, you must trust that good is coming to you. You must lift your spirits to believe better is on its way. We must trust that little by little we are learning to celebrate our loved one's life instead of concentrating on the loss and pain. That we can move forward and are allowed to move forward and create a new life for ourselves. That that is what they would want for us. We need to trust that we will recover from this intense emotional pain. That we will speak in a more positive way. That we will definitely write those five things in your journal each night that you are grateful for to reframe how you are thinking. If we stay in a negative place, always saying things like, Oh, woe is me. Nothing ever works out for me. He died and now I have nothing. Now I will just live my life in poverty and shame. I don't know how I'm going to make it by myself. Or, I'm never going to be happy again. I lost my daughter and I just want to crawl under the covers and never come out. Well, you know, you can do that for a time. But if you are feeling like this several years down the road, you've consciously decided that it is easier. And you're right, it is easier. It's certainly easier to give in. It's certainly easier to give up. But what kind of life would that be? Is that serving your other children who look for you to still be their parent? And your husband, who looks for you to still be his wife. You've lost your trust in yourself. Trust to rebuild a new life, slowly, whatever that new life might be. No one said it would be easy. No one said it wouldn't be extremely painful most days. But if you trust yourself to find a bit of joy today and more tomorrow, Eventually, your focus will turn more positive than negative. You can do this. It may not seem like it now, but you can. Start by writing out all your pain. Pain that's directed at so many people in your life, even the person who died, and even yourself. Sometimes the pain we feel for what we should or shouldn't have done, real or imagined, can be just as crippling as how others treat us. This process may take many days, and if so, just keep adding as many pages as you need. And when you feel like it's complete, go burn it. Don't keep it. This is now in the past, and that's where it needs to stay. Your soul is now calm, the way it should be. Trusting yourself that your grieving process is yours and yours alone is a great gift you can give to yourself. Don't waste your time trying to live up to others' expectations because you will never please them anyway. Live your life. Live up to your expectations. And if you already know, in that still, small voice inside you, 
that it's time to progress more than you are right now? Well, then ask God for direction and the people who can help you. The last thing I want for you is to stay stuck if you're ready for your next phase of this journey. Trust yourself, my warrior. You definitely know what is right for you. Now have the courage to keep moving forward. So now it's time to get up and dance, dance, dance. Feel the music and feel good. Move your body even if you're just wiggling in your seat. So don't question it. Just do it anyway, okay? Thank you for listening in today. Remember to write five things in your journal each night that you are grateful for. Visit my website, marymac.info, for your free book. And please subscribe, rate, and review my podcast wherever you listen to me. And as always, remember to be happy because you deserve to. I'll talk to you again soon.